are the opponents. On target number one, representing Turkey. Al bersaglio numero uno per la Turchia, Fatma Donavas. On target number two, representing Italy. Al bersaglio numero due per l'Italia, Asia Pellizzari. The line judge of this match is Bjorn Strandberg. Turkey, target one, shoots first. Oh, Chris, uh, Fatma Dalabas from uh, Turkey and uh, host nations Asia Pelazari are familiar names with uh, para archery fans. This should be a good one. Yeah, both been around a while, both part of very, very successful para programs in the in the competition category that's really been invested in over the last sort of six years, two Paralympic cycles, W1 for the more impaired athletes competing at this event, usually got an impairment in about three limbs and the top and bottom half of their body, importantly in the torso, um, which makes it more difficult to balance, more difficult to aim, more difficult to control uh, a piece of equipment like a bow. Well, Dalabas is going to show us how it's done at the start of this nine, bronze medal match nine. and into the nine. Nine. No, man. Well, it's an impressive start from the pair of them. Eight. Otto. Shooting 50 meters again, like the compound archers at an 80 centimeter target face. Again, it does look a little bit different, and that's because the outer rings, the black and the white, have been uh, re added for this competition category, the W1. Well, it was an opportunity for Pelazari, and she has taken it just by a single point. Uh, we are operating now on the cumulative score. So these two athletes Asia will carry Pizzari, the score over into the second end. One point lead after the first end for Italy. Impressive start from the pair of them, though. Uh, a 9 and a 10 for Danabas, uh, a 9 and an 8, which perhaps doesn't give the whole story, that those two first arrows were extremely close together. Yeah, no, no, great start, absolutely, coming into this arena, and especially in this heat. One of the big challenges uh, for W1 athletes, because a lot of them are paralyzed, a lot of them don't have that core control, a lot of them also don't have the ability to modulate their own body temperature. Uh, so to compete in, in a place such as Italy, a place such as Rome, um, when the temperatures are reaching 40, 42 on the field, really, really, really tough. And another thing for the athletes and the team management to really think about and really plan uh, when looking at how to approach this competition. Yeah, we've seen a, a lot of the coaches and assistants uh, applying ice packs, which, uh, well, you've given us the explanation of why that's happening. We've seen non-disabled athletes, athletes having that kind of uh, treatment. You just go, well, it's hot. Well, when your body's not able to control that heat, ever so much more important. 26 to Pelizari, 25 to Danabash. The athlete from Takia will shoot first in the second end. Nine. No, that... Nine. 
nine. No, then. Six. Say. Important arrow, that second arrow from Danabas. First arrow outside of the red you've seen in this bronze medal match. Nine. No, then. Opportunity for Asia Pelazari to get a big lead here. It's only the second end, but uh, you want to take these opportunities when they come. Ten. Oh, and she's taken it in a big way there. Look at the difference in the score now. Absolutely phenomenal change around after three arrows. And it just goes to show uh, how much concentration is, is so important. 54 playing 46 now, Chris. Really powerful shot from Pelizari to finish. Looks very, very comfortable. Um, the two arrows that dropped low for Danabas, both in exactly the same place, uh, low, low in the six, suggest it's a, a repetitive issue, a repetitive thing she's done that hasn't quite fit with her normal routine. Um, you know, it's very unlikely for, for that to be random. It's a big target, and when you get two arrows landing together, you've either done the same thing right twice or you've done the same thing uh, wrong twice. How how well she's able to recover from that uh, will be very telling. But ultimately now, Alizari has a has a big big lead in this one. Results are confirmed. Shooting first on target number one is the Turkish archer Fatma Danavas. 54 a 46. Continua a condurre Pellizzari. Si riparte dal bersaglio numero uno con Danavas. Start of the third end here, and uh, Fatma Danabas begins eight points behind her opponent. Twelve, sorry, nine arrows to go. Uh, she needs to be scoring higher than that. One eight from Pedlazari over the first two ends. The rest have been in the yellow. Both archers in this match shooting compound bows, but this is not a compound category. Uh, W1 archers can either use a recurve or a compound bow, much like visually impaired that we saw this morning. Um, but there are limitations uh, on the compound bow. There's a maximum draw weight, uh, which keeps it lighter. There's no magnified sight. So this kind of accuracy over 50 meters is very, very impressive. Nine, love it. Palazzari pulling away though. Seven, eight, liner. Sette, forse, otto. That was called for a measure. Interesting to see what Chris thinks about that after this arrow. Ten. Uh, 29 Ten. there for Asia Pelazari. And uh, just look at that, an 83 for her at the moment. Well, we wait for confirmation on that arrow. Now, that was called a 7-8 liner. Chris, your thoughts? 
I think that one will probably be left down as a seven. Um, but really, let's talk about Asia Pelizari because her performance so far has been very, very impressive. It's, it's so interesting to watch these W1 archers compete. Uh, unlike the open categories, W1 archers classification, um, they they can have support around the, the the core, around the torso, because often they are paralyzed. You know, we spoke about how difficult it is to balance in a chair, um, a wheelchair or on a chair, when compared to balancing on your feet. You don't have the, the nerves in your in your gluteus maximus. You don't have the toes to make those slight uh, subconscious adjustments that keep you upright. But if you can't feel um, your bum, your bottom as well, even more tough to maintain focus and balance. So some of this support helps these archers who are paralyzed, who don't have feeling in the core, you can see that support into the side of Palazzari. Um, and, and for her to be able to shoot that accurately over 50 meters um, without that core feeling, without that core support, without that ability to balance is, is just astonishing to me. Yeah, add to that the consistency she's, she's doing it with. That's even more impressive. Dana Bass starts the Eight. fourth Otto. and uh, trailing by 14 points. Eight. Otto. Eight, Otto. Well, as this progresses, uh, we start taking a look ahead. Well, sounds like there's some issue here with the uh, timing system, I think. Go away! Oh, no. Is there someone? Please, signore, dietro la linea di tiro, potrebbe continuare a camminare? There's someone up in the stands by the looks of things. So that could be dangerous. And you can see now the volunteers uh, running out to try and uh, move the individual on. That's uh, very disruptive for the athletes. And very concerning from a safety point of view. The judge, though, spotted that clearly and uh, good on him for delaying the shot. Difficult though for the athletes to take control of this one. They reset the clock to give a 10 second countdown and uh, very, very well managed by those involved there. Congratulations to the judge especially. Well, what can you say? All you can do is feel for Dana Bass there. That came at completely the wrong time for her. Eight. Otto. 24 points, 19 points. The total for Aza Pelizzar is now 107 to 88. Well, Chris, we can't avoid but talk about uh, the disruption in that fourth end. Uh, very difficult and more so for the athlete from Turkey than uh, uh, the Italian. I mean, difficult to, to deal with someone who's obviously ignored the safety signs and the, and the, the no entry um, 
barriers, but uh, well managed by by the by the officials on site. And yeah, tough to deal with from the archers, but unfortunately, you've got to prepare for all kinds of things when you're going to come and compete in a in a situation like this. Uh, we've had we've had disruptions of all kinds um, over the years. We've had you know we've had rain that has has caused uh, things to go off, the timing to go off. We've had a few timing issues this year as well, where archers had to stop and, and return to the line. Uh, you have yellow cards in team events. You have all kinds of things that can break the rhythm, and, and part of the game is being able to deal with that. Um, at this point, Talazari is so far ahead that, let's be honest, that's not what lost, lost the match. Um, and really, uh, the finish now from both athletes is the important thing. Finish strong and... Uh, and leave this arena with a with a with a good taste in the mouth. You're watching the women's W1 Open bronze medal match between Fatma Danabas of Turkey and Asia Palazzari of Italy at these European Championships of 2022. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's a tricky position for Danabas. Seven, set. So, a 1-1 one, one of 4 is gettable. The problem is, Palazzari has two more arrows to go. Well, mathematically now, this is uh, done and dusted. Pelazari can completely relax and just go through her process here. She knows that the bronze medal is hers. Seven, set. Well, a good way to finish. One, one, three is what's been set, but uh, as you can see, that's already been achieved. What's the total score going to be for Asia Palazzari? Eight. Oh, well, it's a one twenty-nine for her. And Asia Palazzari, well, completely points. dominant, really, throughout. Asia, yes, there was the disruption of uh, an intruder the uh, into the safety the area in the Asia range. Bellizzari. But uh, as Chris Wells Wins. said, that, that made little difference to the outcome of this one. Palazzari taking the women's W1 Open bronze at the 2022 European Championships.